So in the previous video, uh, where we left off is we essentially had all those contours separated. And now we were starting to make the plug as well as start to stack these together. Let's go ahead and copy this uh, one more time. Control C, Control V. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to start to stack these. Um, so what's going to happen is, for example, if I want to put this piece on top of this piece, um, I might not know exactly where they line up. Or for example, if, if I want to put this piece on this piece, I might struggle with knowing where that lines up. So how I'm going to solve this is I'm actually going to copy these onto the next layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these lines. Um, for example, if I have these, I'm going to type in copy. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over to that layer. And I'm going to put that as a score line. So what happens is essentially uh, when I put this model together, I can match this cut piece uh, to the score piece right here. And I'm going to do this for all of the same files as well. So I'm going to select this. Um, I'm going to type in copy. I'm going to move this over. I'm going to make sure that uh, those are score lines. Um, same thing here. Copy this over. Let's make sure that is a score layer. Uh, take this, copy it, copy it over. Take this, copy it over. And then same thing, making sure that those are on score layers. Um, and same thing for this as well. So let's go ahead and separate these. Control C, Control C, Control C. Let's delete this. Make sure that's on a score layer. Delete that. Make sure that's on a score layer. And then we're just going to delete this. So essentially, if you look at the file, uh, what we've done is we've actually started to mark those locations uh, where the next piece uh, will sit on top of. Um, so that's going to be important because when you laser cut it, you can just easily stack it. It's going to save a lot of time and it's going to be less work in the long run. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to label these contours. So let's go to text layer. We're going to make sure we're on the score layer. We're going to type in text. Uh, sorry, we're going to go to the text tool. And uh, let's go ahead and start to label these. So let's say it's one, for example. It's too small. Let's do a quarter of an inch. So we're going to start to kind of label these um, files. So I'm labeling all of those contours just so that I know exactly uh, where they sit. And what I'm also doing is that I'm placing these labels in a location where uh, they can't really be seen. So what that means is that when I stack them, I'm not going to be able to see any of those uh, numbers because they're going to be covered up uh, by the layer that sits on top of them. And of course, you'll realize that as I get closer to this end, um, let me, oh, I forgot to copy this. Let's go copy this over. So I realize that as I get closer to the end, there's not really uh, room to put numbers. So that's completely fine. We can just put a number right above just so we know uh, what piece it is. <clears throat> Great. So now we have all of those laser cut files. Uh, we have the plug. We have the score marks for the road. Uh, and we actually have those labels as well. So now we're going to lay down our material. Uh, we're going to actually lay this out according to the laser cutter that we're using. So let's say our laser cutter is 24 by 36. Um, so I'm going to type in 36 inches uh, by 24 inches. So this is going to be uh, one sheet of 8 inch chipboard that's actually going to fit in the laser cutter. So let's say this is our sheet of 8 inch chipboard. So now we're going to actually lay out our pieces um, so that they can uh, be laser cut. I'm going to make sure and group all my pieces together just so that uh, if I move anything around by mistake, uh, nothing really happens to it. Let's go ahead and group everything. Uh, let's continue to group, continue to group. <clears throat> okay, uh, so once I group it together, then I can just quickly move those pieces and kind of lay them in a location. So I'll place these here. And the whole idea is that when you're essentially laying these uh, laser cut files out, you want to lay them out in such a way where you have the least amount of wastage. Um, so you want to waste as little material as you can. So I'm going to continue to lay those files down. So now I've laid all those files down. Um, that's the exact format that um, the laser cutter is going to cut it at. And what's going to happen is that it's going to cut the red layers um, where any of those cut marks are, and it's going to cut the yellow, and it's going to score those wherever those are. 
Then I'm going to take this, I'm going to quickly select it, I'm going to type in export, and I'm going to select, uh, let's say we name it as um, laser cut file, uh, laser cut file for tiny house. And I'm going to change my format to DWG. Let's press OK. And for default, uh, yeah, I just like default, OK. And there you go. So you've exported that as a DWG file, which you're going to import uh, when you go in LaserCut. So before we end, what I've done is I've essentially modeled it. So how it's going to look once you laser cut it. Um, so you realize that I'm using the exact same uh, laser cut files that we had. And what I did is I just extruded them to show you how it's going to look once it's completed. You're going to have a plug right here. So that plug is going to show you exactly where the house sits into. You're going to have score lines that show you where the road is. And you're going to have each of those contours, and each of these are an eighth of an inch. So let's see. Let's see if it's actually an eighth of an inch. Yeah, it's an eighth of an inch. And uh, the plug should actually be a quarter of an inch at the lowest point and should be half an inch at the highest point. So yeah, and then your final model is going to be you know 6, 6.25 by 6.25. And then we're going to slide the building into that. Now lastly, before we end, uh, now that you have your topography modeled uh, with, you know, 8th inch chipboard, uh, we're actually going to consider a house that can be 3D printed uh, and placed into that model. So we're going to go back to our file. Let's, uh, let's zoom selected, zoom in. So let's say this is a house that we want to uh, 3D print, right? You realize that this is the exact scale that we need it to be. Uh, nothing has changed. I haven't changed the scale at all. We're working at the same scale as a topography model. Um, the one thing that we need to consider is the base itself. So I'm going to make sure my base is uh, a quarter of an inch because that is what um, that's what we just uh, created in the topography model. So I have the base, um, and then I'm going to essentially 3D print this. So our size is going to be it's going to be quite small. It's going to be like about an inch by like an inch and a half. So I'm going to select my entire uh, house. I'm going to type in export and I'm going to export this as house 3D print. And I'm going to save it as uh, an STL file, which is a stereolithography. Um, so, right, your STL file. I'm going to type in OK. And now make sure that units are going to be in inches. Um, so, it's going to be the tolerance. That's fine. OK. Uh, let's save it as binary. Okay, great. So now we saved our file as a 3D print file. And when you go to the fabrication shop, you can just give them that file and they'll print it for you. Let's go ahead and place this building inside our model to see how it's going to look in our laser cut model. Uh, let's, let's group this together. Let's go ahead and move this so that it sits uh, right in our site. Let's go to this view. Okay, so once you have this 3D printed model, it's essentially just going to slide directly into your uh, topo file, um, just like a plug would. And then you'll have a chipboard model as well as you'll, a 3D printed model, and that'll work together. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much it.